Hi, this is a short follow-up for my little CNC series that I made some time ago. In that series you could see in detail how I have built a CNC milling machine from scratch. Check it out when you haven't seen it yet. Since the last video I only made small changes on my machine. I doubled the LED light just to have a better view on the end mill. I added some protectors for my switches here because I kept touching them by accident. And I modified the motor mount plates for the X and Y axis. The screw holes are larger now and the screws are embedded in silicone tubing. This allows the motor to move a little bit. Reason for that is, compared to let's say a shape Poco here, my machine is relatively loud. The soft suspension of the motors reduces the noise quite a bit. Oh, and I gave my machine a nameplate, which is not mounted yet. Since the beginning, one concern with my machine was parts wearing out, especially the ball bearing sliders and the nylon nuts. I have used my machine quite a bit now and it was running for more or less 6 hours. I milled the name sign, including a first try where I calculated some stuff wrong. I did several printed circuit boards, the little skull here and the hackerspace sign. I also did wooden gears and some other stuff. After all that, the work bed feels a little bit more loose than it did at the beginning but the precision did not suffer from that and is within a twentieth of a millimeter. That's as good as I was hoping it to be. I used a sharpened one millimeter sewing needle as end mill for some of my projects. I also tried it with a thin half millimeter needle to make really fine cuts. The needle is sharpened in the same way as the one millimeter one. Here I'm using the thin needle for carving out the eyes and the nose of my skull. It worked fine at the beginning, but soon it turned out that a cheap needle is not the most robust end mill. Who would have guessed? I got decent PCB milling bits from Amazon, which works just great. They are triangular with a 45 degree angle. Used with the right cutting deepness, they allow traces in PCB, which are just one millimeter apart. You can see such traces here for example. And also here, where I've placed a trace in between the legs of an LED. I designed this transistor tester as an exercise for software-based PCB design. I have used my mill to cut the traces, drill the holes, and also to cut out the whole PCB at the end. All holes are well placed and the traces are clean and without ridges. This little tool allows it to test NPN or PNP transistors with the two different lag orders, emitter base collector and emitter collector base. Having the LED light up means that the transistor conducts between collector and emitter. And when I press the button, the base gets disconnected from the power. The LED must go off in that case, and when it doesn't, it means that the transistor is broken and just shorts out. I also wanted to make a backplate for my little tester, so that the contacts are not shortened out when I place it on a metal surface. I used my mill and guided a piece of acrylic plastic just by hand. Turns out the wood cutting end mill that I tried seems a bad choice for engraving holes in acrylic plastic. The plastic melts very quickly and accumulates as a blob on the milling bit. My holes here are more molten into the plastic than milled into it for that reason, but hey, at least it works. There are specific end mills for plastic, I might get them later and try them out. For another project, I designed and milled two round circuit boards which, when put together in this kind of sandwich, built a so-called Jewel Thief LED flashlight. This circuit can run LEDs on practically empty batteries. I have built this circuit into the head of a cheap LED flashlight. There's more projects coming up soon, so I might make more videos. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.